the Horizon Initiative. Despite its roots in cosmic horror and science fiction, the SCP universe has quite a fair share of religious-related content. There are religious anomalies, both original and connected to real-world religions, original religious groups such as the Sarkic cults, and there are groups connected to real-world religions, such as the Horizon Initiative. Since there are groups of interest involving practically any mindset or belief system you can think of, it's not a big surprise that the major religions of the world would have some hand in anomalies. The Horizon Initiative gives us another unique perspective into the world of SCPs, and well, as usual, I won't be able to give you a complete view of that perspective, I'll provide a good start. In the late 1960s, a number of influential groups within the main three Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, came together to form the Horizon Initiative, as a response to the spread of anomalies across the world. Although the three religions have their differences, the group found common ground in their animosity towards other religious groups of interest, namely the Church of the Broken God, the Sarkic Cults, Fifthism, and the Church of the Second Hytoth. The Horizon Initiative see each of these groups as great threats, and utilize any means at their disposal to combat them. The elimination of these religious groups is only one of their goals, however, as their primary goal is either the safekeeping or destruction of various anomalous objects, relics, and artifacts, depending on the nature of the object. Typically, any anomaly that is antithetical to their belief system is destroyed, and any others are collected and safeguarded. The Horizon Initiative is led by a tribunal, three leaders each representing a sub-faction of the organization. Currently, Samuel is the leader of the Sons of Shemai, Adnan is the leader of Atiba al-Kitab, and Bernard is the leader of the Ordinus Occulti Luminis. Due to the inherent strife present in the varying beliefs of the initiative's members, however, the organization is a bit fractured. Within the initiative, many members are part of one of the three main core, each responsible for different duties. The scribe core consists of librarians, researchers, archivists, and clerical staff, working to analyze the vast amounts of religious texts and documentation collected by the initiative. Their primary project concerns the universal texts, essentially religious documents relating to the history and doctrine of religious groups and anomalies. Basically, they're working on creating a new Bible to unify the entire Horizon initiative in a single belief system. The Shepherd Corps comprise a wide range of Horizon Initiative members, functioning as the basic agents of the organization throughout the world. They provide intelligence, facilitate relic recovery, and occasionally undertake combat missions against hostile forces. They typically work in pairs, living undercover as civilians, or operating as community leaders to establish relations with other groups. Shepherds receive assignments from the district heads of the Corps, or receive special orders from the Tribunal. Most Shepherds operate loosely with anomalous objects, freely using them in both combat and research situations, and some veteran Shepherds will carry around a dozen minor anomalous objects on their person. Finally, there are the Wolves, officially known as Project Malleus. The Wolves are the combat forces of the Initiative made up of the most zealous and aggressive members of the organization, led by Henry de Montfort. The other groups within the initiative are generally intimidated by the wolves, with the shepherds especially disliking them, leading the wolves to refer to them as sheep. The wolves kill and die without question, and are first in line to combat the other anomalous religious organizations. Speaking of which, it's clear that the Horizon Initiative is openly hostile to any of the other religious groups, such as the Church of the Broken God, and use any of the anomalies at their disposal in efforts to wipe them out. As for other groups though, the Horizon Initiative is not quite as bloodthirsty. They are on good relations with the Mana Charitable Foundation, a non-profit humanitarian organization devoted to using anomalies 
to help those in need around the world. They also support many cells of the Serpent's Hand and non-violent Anartists, who often supply minor anomalous objects to the Initiative. Officially, the Initiative has truces with both the SCP Foundation and the GOC, but in reality these truces are constantly on the verge of breaking, mainly due to strife caused by the Initiative, as you can imagine. They also occasionally deal with Marshall, Carter, and Dark, but typically regard them as untrustworthy. Although not openly hostile, the Initiative doesn't have great relations with the ORIA, the Chaos Insurgency, Paratech groups such as the Anderson Robotics, Gamers Against Weed, Are We Cool Yet, and Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting, primarily due to differing views on anomalies and human life. In short, the Horizon Initiative doesn't play well with others to a great degree, but they are willing to occasionally put aside their differences for a greater cause. The best example of this is perhaps related to SCP-2217, as the Initiative is currently working alongside the Foundation, the GOC, and the Church of the Broken God to combat the Sarkic cults and prevent a catastrophic outbreak of SCP-610 on December 31st, 2019. Speaking of SCPs though, let's move on to looking at a few anomalous objects that the Horizon Initiative has been involved with. SCP-475 is a soap sculpture depicting an unidentified pope, bearing the inscription, Cleanliness is next to godliness. When placed into water and then applied to human skin, 100% of foreign contaminants are removed, including dead skin cells, perspiration, bodily parasites, mold, dirt, and detergents. That's pretty handy, and would probably fall under beneficial SCPs if not for the secondary effect, which triggers when the soap is used by a member of an organized religion. These subjects report greater mental clarity and greater adherence to church doctrine after using the soap, with the effects increasing in intensity the longer the subject uses the soap. After enough time, the soap will proceed to change all bodies of water within a 5 meter radius into an equivalent liquid considered holy by the subject's religion. For Catholics, this liquid might be chrism oil, but for more anomalous religions it might change into machine oil for members of the Church of the Broken God, or blood for Sarkics. Other anomalous effects might also manifest in the subject, as one Catholic subject displayed stigmata in their hands, wounds corresponding to Jesus Christ's crucifixion wounds, while a member of the Pentecostal Church began speaking in tongues. A member of the Broken Church developed symptoms of SCP-217 infection, the machine virus, while a fifthist member melted into candle wax. The soap sculpture was actually given to the SCP Foundation by certain insubordinate members of the Horizon Initiative who believed that the sculpture only led to more and more infighting within the organization, and a breakdown of unity. Another anomalous object that the Horizon Initiative gave up to the Foundation is SCP-2121, a noose composed of a variety of fleshy tissues, including ligaments, tendons, portions of an intestine, and a 1.3 meter long tongue. When used to hang someone, the individual will remain conscious for roughly three and a half minutes longer than expected, and will remain capable of speech until loss of consciousness. They will wail in shock and despair over the apparent deaths of a variety of divine figures, curse an unidentified and unnamed deific figure, and plea for mercy from the same figure. After death, the body will desiccate with all bodily fluids except for blood pooling beneath the subject, and their blood flowing upwards where it is absorbed by the noose. If at least one person is not hanged every lunar month, the noose emits a chaotic noise consisting of screaming, moans of pain, and panicked vocalizations in unknown languages, steadily increasing to 137 decibels over 24 hours. This sound can be heard up to 1.7 kilometers away, even by deaf individuals or by those inside a soundproof room. Religious individuals who hear the sound will become increasingly despondent, and will attempt to commit suicide as soon as possible, 
preferably using SCP-2121. The Horizon Initiative gave it up as they couldn't destroy it, and couldn't abide having to sacrifice individuals to it, something the Foundation doesn't have qualms with. The Horizon Initiative is also connected to a couple 001 proposals. The Broken God proposal, which I discussed in my Ouroboros series, and the 36 proposal. This proposal describes 36 individuals of varying ages, genders, and ethnicities. When any anomalous item or phenomena is brought within close proximity of one of these individuals, the anomalous quality is nullified. When multiple members of the 36 are brought together, the range and intensity of this nullified field is increased. Additionally, when any of the 36 die, multiple anomalous events will occur along with the sudden appearance of varying dangerous entities. Examples include sudden rainfall containing numerous fatal pathogens, massive walking creatures, and spontaneous ritualistic cannibalism in a widespread area. Civilian casualties after each of these events are generally tremendous, reaching into the tens or hundreds of thousands. After the death of one of the 36, they are supposedly reincarnated as newborn babies although the Foundation has yet to prove this. It's believed that once all 36 individuals are brought together, their nullifying field will reach across the cosmos, removing all anomalous properties from existence and making the world young again. The Horizon Initiative is heavily invested in the protection and gathering of all 36 of these individuals, believing them to be sent by God to save the world. The concept of 36 righteous individuals with a unique purpose in life is rooted in Jewish myth. The first five of the 36 were recovered by the Foundation after finding them in the care of three individuals who are believed to be the founders of the initiative. A letter was later found by the Foundation that was apparently written by the initiative's tribunal. I'll read it in its entirety, due to it giving some good flavor for the organization. How do you explain to someone that the world is dying, and that only they may save it? We have often asked ourselves that question during the sixty or so years since that faithful day in Jerusalem, and entertained different notions on the most effective ways to do so. Fifty years ago we were Elijah, full of bluster and wrath, calling upon our less faithful brothers to rally to the thirty-sixth cause, using fear to further our goals. Thirty years ago we were Isaiah, seeking to strengthen our less courageous brothers, that with the conviction that our cause was just, speaking of the greatness of our task, using their newfound confidence to build an order on which our goals could stand. Ten years ago we were Jeremiah, weeping at the doors of the world's greatest powers, pleading for them to listen, for we now understood that this task was beyond our power alone. And now, now we are Jonah and are lost for words. How do we make you understand what is at stake, when the only way you could see is to let everything your organization ever did go, for the word of three old men? That is too much to ask even of righteous men, and we are not yet certain you are such. All we can ask is that you listen. You have seen what the thirty-six can do. You have seen the way the world unravels around them, but you do not understand why. You see them as just another entry in your great book of diseases, a threat to the wholeness of the body you keep, the world. It is not so. The items and phenomena you keep hidden from the world are not diseases, they are symptoms, and you are not keeping the world healthy by masking them when the underlying condition is ignored. The problem is that this condition is chronic, the world is simply old, and the thirty-six, they might make it young again. For them to be able to do so, you will be required to make the ultimate sacrifice. You must relinquish your identity. You were made to secure, and we are asking you to trust in the unproven. You were made to contain, and we are asking you to release. You were meant to protect, and we are asking you to leave the world vulnerable. It is an impossible request, this we know, but you must fulfill it if there is to be any hope for us. Release the thirty-six. Let them come together. Let them do what needs to be done, and we shall follow. Help three old men make the world young again. Don't let it die.
Depending on how you feel about different 001 proposals, you can take or leave the 36 proposal as being part of the Horizon Initiative's goals. All in all, the Horizon Initiative is not currently a massively detailed group of interest, with only a little over a dozen SCPs relating to the group, many of them giving only the briefest of mentions, and a handful of tales. The Initiative provides a unique perspective in the SCP universe though, struggling with traditional doctrine in the wake of the existence of anomalies, and also a dichotomy between the rigid scientific approach of the Foundation and the faith-based approach of the Initiative. Looking at a group such as the Horizon Initiative brings up a lot of thoughts about the nature of religion and the existence of numerous deific entities within the SCP universe. While it would be easy to see how someone knowledgeable of these anomalies and entities would question their beliefs, the members of the Horizon Initiative keep the faith.